Hey there, it's Chris from Good Roads. In the last video, we made this and its counterpart. This is a 3D printed mold for pressing a skateboard deck. So in this video, we're gonna use those two mold halves to press a proper rock maple veneer skateboard deck. And then I'm gonna design the shape for that deck using traditional methods and kind of walk you guys through my process with that. So let's get started making this deck. The first thing I needed to do was cut my veneers down to size so that they fit in my molds. I got my veneers from RoarRocket.com, and while these are standard size skate veneers, they're too long to fit between the alignment posts of my mold, and they're way wider than they need to be for the kind of board that I'm making. I prefer to have my veneers closer to the actual size of my mold, it just wastes less glue. So I'm going to be cutting mine down. Now that the wood fits in my mold, I've got to get set up to press my deck. For this build, I'm going to be using what I call my mechanical mobile press. This press uses carriage bolts and spars to clamp down the mold. The nuts that go on those bolts are embedded in these 3D printed knobs I made. These make it much easier to get all the spars clamped down before the glue has a chance to set. And I find it to be much faster than using a wrench on each individual nut. For glue, I'll be using old Reliable Type Bond 3, and I'll be trying something new for me in this build. I'm going to be using a paint roller instead of a squeegee to spread my glue. I've got my veneers stacked in the reverse order that I want them on the deck, and they're sitting on the top half of the mold, so that all of that is at hand as I work on my layout. I'm also going to be using some blue tape to hold my layup together. This will stop the veneers from sliding around while the glue cures. So to start, I got my first sheet situated on some face-up tape. Then I went through the process of thoroughly wetting out each sheet of veneer with glue. I'm orienting my veneers in the standard way. Two long grain sheets, one cross grain sheet, one long grain, one cross, then two more long for seven sheets total. Once my layup was done, I moved it into the press and sandwiched it between the two halves of the mold. Type on 3 takes a day to cure before it can be handled, but I gave this one a little bit more time. I came back two days later and pulled it out of the press. Before completely removing the mold, I used my built-in bolt hole drilling guides to drill the mounting holes for my trucks. Doing it this way guarantees that my trucks will always be perfectly aligned with the geometry of my deck. Nothing gets lost in translation. Yes, boy. Yes. Oh my God. This is the nicest deck I've ever pressed. Holy crap, it's perfect. I think you guys can tell I'm excited about this one. It looks really good to the eye, but when I ran my hand over the deck, I could feel that every detail I had designed into the molds was reflected in the shape of the deck. I've never had a result this precise, and for someone who's been making boards for as long as I have, this is really, really exciting. 
Now, I put a lot of effort into designing the geometry of this deck and getting my molds perfect, so I also want to be sure to put a lot of effort into making sure that I get the shape of the deck just right. For this deck, I'm going to be using traditional methods instead of digital design tools because, for me, I still have an easier time getting the shapes and curves and proportions that are pleasing to me with my hands than I do with a computer. But I also have to be sure that I'm still getting that high level of precision and that the shape is just so. So I'm gonna be using some interesting tools and being really careful as I go through making my design. To start off, I'm gonna be using my bolt holes as a reference to establish a center line. This deck is the second iteration of this freestyle deck that I made. I'll have the link to the video where I shaped and added art to this board if you're interested in checking that out. There's a lot to like about this deck. I'm really happy with how it came out, but there's also a lot that I want to improve. For starters, I want this version to be a little wider, so I took some measurements and marked lines for the width of the deck. The original deck has a bit of a waist, and I actually really like that, so I transferred that over as well. A little later on, I actually end up adjusting the inner curve of that, but the concept stays. Up next is one of the things that I really thought could use a significant update. I wanted to make the cutout for the waist shorter lengthwise so that I'd have a larger flat platform to stand on for rail stands. That's one of the tricks that I had a lot of fun learning and I'm having a lot of fun playing with, so I want to design my board geometry in a way that makes it a little bit easier. When it comes to the nose and tail of the board, I have a lot that I want to update. This is the place where I'm going to be making the most significant updates to the shape. The fat square kicktails on the original deck look cool to my eye, but as I'm trying to learn rail flips, I just don't think there's enough of an angle to them. I also think they could stand to be a little longer and a little more rounded, which should help with all different kinds of tricks. So, the new kicks are going to be longer, more rounded, and have more of a taper than the old ones did. I used a compass to draw the radius of my nose and tail, and then I used a set of tools called French Curves to help me get nice organic shapes, but to do it in a way that's repeatable. French curves are really cool tools because you can take any segment of the inner or outer edge of the tool and it will be a different curve. For my long curves here, I'm using the end of the tool as a reference point. And for the smaller curves, I'm actually using some marks that I had drawn straight onto the tool itself. By having those reference points, I can be sure that I'm using the same curve every time. Afterwards, I repeated all of that for the other end of the board, and my design is done. And I actually stopped myself here, because instead of just going over to the bandsaw and cutting out my shape, I think what I want to do is make myself a router template. And I think the best way to do that is to make it in tandem with shaping this board. I'm gonna cut my board and make my template at the same time, if that makes any sense. But for now, I'm really happy with this shape. I'm glad I took the time to be precise, use tools, was repeatable with my measurements, because this just looks organic, it looks functional, it looks like it's going to be a really solid deck, which is why I want to make that template. Because if the template works out, there might be many more of these decks in the future. So, if you haven't subscribed already, why don't you go ahead and get aboard this train, see where we go with this deck in particular, see what I'm up to with those router templates. There'll be that and many, many more other cool DIY board sport type projects coming up here on the channel. If you've got any questions, leave them down in the comment section below. If you got any comments, leave them down in the question section below. I'll do my best to get to him. We'll talk. I always appreciate having you all come along with me on this journey. So until next time, I'll see you soon. Where'd your mouse go? He climbed down. He climbed down the curtain. Spider mouse, dude. Spider mouse, spider mouse. He walked down. <laughs> That's a hard direction to walk.